Walk inside Moderna's Technology Center and you'll feel like you stepped into one of the leading companies of Silicon Valley. Avant-garde, scaling up rapidly, buzzing with energy. But this production hub is located just outside of Boston, a former Polaroid manufacturing plant, which Moderna refers to as a campus with neighborhoods. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Scott Nickerson oversees the facility where Moderna's first COVID-19 vaccine was created in January 2020. And that all started right here. All started right here. Moderna's next challenge is staying ahead of the virus by tailoring booster shots to emerging variants. How long does it take to create a booster? So let me just give you a feel for how we did it to get to phase one GMP material here. We were able to take from sequence and get it into a vial and test it and release it in 42 days. And so could it be as quick if you're talking about a booster targeting a specific variant? It can be just as quick. Moderna is able to pivot so quickly because of the game-changing mRNA technology. Every one of its products begins when a DNA sequence is entered into its proprietary software and transcribed into messenger RNA, or mRNA, which gives the body instructions on how to fight a foreign invader. The mRNA is then purified, covered in a fatty envelope called a lipid nanoparticle, filtered, frozen, and shipped to be bottled. So at this scale, we can manufacture a batch in about five days. Quality control is high-tech as well. So this is actually technology that's used by the NFL to track performance of athletes. A receiver mounted on the ceiling tracks every operator through a sensor in their ID badge. So employees who are assigned to work in one drug product area, each meticulously color-coded and taped off, don't cross over into another. If you're assigned to the yellow train, as you call it, Correct. and you step across the blue tape, what happens? We will be able to have an alarm that tells us that they went a place they shouldn't go. Wow. Yeah, it's important. Keeping pace with the virus means knowing where to pivot. And at Moderna's headquarters, half an hour away, they've tested more than 100 different variants to see if they need to create a new vaccine. Moderna's president, Stephen Hoag. Do you have teams of people back there trying to forecast where the next variant may occur? Oh, absolutely. And not only that, um, the moment that we see a new variant emerge, the moment there's the first posting of a new sequence to the international databases, we download that. We look at all of the different mutations that emerged and we ask ourselves the question, is this the canary in the coal mine? Is this the one that we're worried about? Moderna currently has six different boosters in development, including one combined with a flu shot, another targeting the Delta variant. Delta surprised us. Delta as a variant is far more transmissible. But fortunately, Delta is not an immune escape variant. And what I mean by that, it's not one that has really hidden itself from our vaccines or our immune systems. The big concern that we have scientifically right now are, are some of those things, that increased ability to infect and the ability to hide from the immune system. Are they gonna co-evolve in a new variant? And the approach we're taking scientifically is we're bringing forward what's called a multivalent vaccine, but multiple different variants of concern and trying to protect against the places we think the virus is gonna go. While Moderna's original vaccine is effective against the main variants in circulation, the question is, will it become less effective over time? And will we need a booster to increase immunity? Well, as a company, Moderna, we think yes. Our clinical trials, which are the longest exposures to the vaccine and the virus that we have, are starting to suggest to us that it's, it's time to get, get concerned and get ready. Hoag says Moderna will ask Health Canada to approve a booster six months after your second shot. The booster would be a half dose using the original vaccine formulation. This is from one of our clinical trials. And what you can see is after the first two doses of vaccine, you see this very significant increase in the level of neutralizing protection in your blood. That's good. But as you follow it out towards six months, there's this general trend down. And at some point that decline will be to such a low level that it might not be providing you any protection in your blood. We should expect antibodies to wane though. You would expect antibodies to wane. And it, just because they fall all the way down one day, doesn't mean that you'd have breakthrough cases of COVID-19 on the vaccine. But breakthrough cases among its clinical trial participants started to emerge. People who were fully vaccinated and still got COVID-19. As we got into the summer and saw Delta, 
we actually started to see the significant increase, almost hockey stick-like increase, in the number of cases. And that really is the intersection of this declining immunity and an increasing force of infection from Delta at about one year in the United States that causes us to say, we think a booster dose of the vaccine will we'll get that neutralizing immunity back up where it was and nice and strong and stop those breakthrough cases. The other mRNA vaccine manufacturer, Pfizer-BioNTech, is also advocating for a booster, saying the effectiveness of its two-dose vaccine dips from 96% to 84% four to six months out. So what do we mean by a dip in vaccine protection? And the devil is very much in the details. Dr. Danutis Kuronsky leads a team at the British Columbia Centre for Disease Control, which is tracking vaccine effectiveness in real time. Her methodology, first used in influenza in 2004, has been adopted around the world, and the findings will help guide the province on whether to administer a booster. It's not a done deal in my mind. Uh, there are still uh, gaps in knowledge uh, that we need to fill in order to make a determination. Dr. Skoronsky says the protection from two doses of an mRNA vaccine is outstanding. It's important to remember that the goal of the COVID-19 vaccination program is to minimize hospitalizations and deaths, severe outcomes. So if we can achieve that, we've achieved the goal of the program. On preventing severe outcomes, data shows both mRNA vaccines are still performing well. The concern is that if those breakthrough infections eventually become severe infections and then, God forbid, death, we really will wish that we had boosted people to maintain the high level of protection they've been enjoying through the early part of this year. The drive to understand how COVID-19 vaccines are working is spurring research around the world, including at the University of Montreal Hospital Research Centre, where virologist Andres Finzi arrives before dawn. So the antibodies are important, but they don't explain the full situation. Finzi and his partner, Dr. Daniel Kaufman, are studying the immune response to the vaccine and caution, gauging its durability based solely on antibodies is missing half the story. The message could be a bit dangerous if we say if the antibody decreases, it's, it's an indication, or if you get infected but not sick at all, you it's an indication for booster. That's because the other key piece to immune protection is at the cellular level. Up to six months post-vaccination, studies uh, from, uh, from the US and other places, and we are getting uh, similar results, we are measuring that the, the cellular responses are there. It's when these, these cells are kind of quiet, you know, kind of dormant, but when they see uh, a pathogen again, it's not the antibodies that wake up, it's these cells that wake up and then begin to produce antibodies again. What Dr. Skoronsky points out is that while some countries may be moving ahead with boosters, the Canadian experience, where many provinces delayed second doses by up to four months, may be different. When you have a longer interval between the first and the second dose, you generally get higher vaccine immune responses. I think in retrospect, we will probably say that time between the doses extended the durability of the vaccine. So is it plausible because Canadians took longer to get the second dose, they won't need a booster as quickly as others? I think it's not only plausible, I think it's likely. Because the more recently you were boosted with your second dose, the less likely you're going to need a third dose booster. The challenge of that for all of us is you, you also don't want to wait too long. And if you received your second dose the, in the summer, um, uh, six months from now, it could become a very bad moment because you'll see high forces of infection and breakthroughs. Come Christmas time in Canada, things could look very different. I think that's the concern, that in Christmas things could look very different. Ultimately, it will fall to Health Canada to make a decision on boosters, weighing the safety, the ethics, and the necessity.